Okay, so we are two minutes in already. Thank you for being early. Um, so because of the very limited time, I have kind of created a structure around this. So I just have a couple of questions for you, then you can ask your own questions, things like that. Okay. So um, firstly, I just wanted to introduce yourself. You can just tell me about you, tell me um, what you were doing previously, what you're doing right now, what you're hoping to achieve in the near future, just, yeah, stuff like that. Okay. So um, I started product design about two years ago. I started learning in 2019, but then um, I started working professionally in 2020. And then before um, product design, I was a back-end developer mm -hmm. for a while. And then um, a friend, I was mainly trying to transition from back-end to full stack. I wanted to try front end design a bit. And then um, a friend of mine told me that it would be great if I could learn design before actually transitioning or before trying um, front end. So that would give me a better understanding of how to go about the front end uh, skills. But then when I started designing, I just realized that there's no way I'm going to do anything else apart from design anymore. So then um, in 2020, I made the decision to transition. And then um, since then, it's been fun, fun experience so far. Currently, I am a lead product designer at a company called Impact Technologies over here in Ghana. Yeah, and um, I think so far, what I'm trying to do now is that for next year, I have a goal of um, trying to get or of getting um, a remote job, a job outside the country. And then um, currently, I tried applying for a couple so far, but then it doesn't seem like I've been able to get past the ATS system. But it's, mm. it's like we're getting emails left and right every single time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm just trying to see how I can navigate that space to at least get a foot into the door to get an interview. Mm, okay. Mm. Okay, I'm just trying to take some notes. Okay. So what are you hoping to achieve now in the next, let's say in 2023, what's like your major goal? The major goal for 2023 is to uh, get the remote job, hopefully in a fintech. Okay. Doing a fintech company fintech. or a design That's agency. So either fintech or ed design. No, design agency. Oh, a design agency. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So would you say you're a junior, senior, or mid-level designer? Um, I'm a mid-level designer. Awesome. Do you have a link to your CV and portfolio? Something I can just look at quickly? Uh, sure. Let me grab it real quick. Okay. So why do you want to work specifically in FinTech? Um, the, I feel like I really like the fintech space and then um, I'm very passionate about helping people achieve some form of financial independence or financial freedom. Uh, and then I think um, one of the ways to do that has to do with how they can manage their money. Uh, so um, for a fintech, if I'm working for a fintech, I would like it to do with something in terms of helping people um, charge their expenses or just in general like be able to see their income versus expenses and how much they have at the end of the day, or even like helping them save to achieve a particular goal that they have. Mm. So mm. I just dropped a link to my- Yeah, um, I'm already looking at it. Yeah, okay. I'm already looking at it. Yeah. Um, while I'm looking at this, um, you say you've been applying for jobs on what platforms? Um, I've been using Indeed. LinkedIn, yeah, I think Indeed and LinkedIn so far. Okay, so have you been doing any, when did you, okay, firstly, when did you start doing, applying for these jobs? Like around when did you start actively? Actively last month. Last month. Okay. So have you been invited for any interview? No, none so far. 
Like, how many jobs will you say you've applied to? Um, between 10 to 20. I'm pretty sure that's maybe, that's an underestimation. <laughs> All right. Okay. Awesome. So are you looking to relocate outside of Ghana or you just want a remote job? Um, I think I would love to relocate, but then if I'm not able to relocate, then I'll take a remote job instead. Okay. 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 That's fair enough. Um, so as you've been applying for jobs, have you been using cover letters? You have a cover letter? Um, no, I haven't been using any cover letter. Okay. I think okay. most of the ones that I've been applying for don't ask for cover letters. Mm. Mm. Okay. 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 All right. Um, right. I'll comment on some of your responses shortly. So I'm looking at this project to call my fig as future investment goal. So that's obviously a fintech, I think. Yeah. Um, so generally, I like the way, I like the fact that you've, you kind of document your thought process and your whole, your whole process is a process. I like how it's not just heavy on, um, what's it called? On just um, UI designs and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I think one major feedback I have looking at this first project is just layout. I think so. Rather than having it, I think I like how you even add bit like bullet points. But for instance, where I'm looking at design process, so you've said research, design, prototype, handoff. That's pretty standard. So I don't, I don't see the points. <laughs> when I see that in people's yeah. portfolio, I just smile because I'm like, I'm just filling up the space. Yeah. <laughs> How else would you have done the project if not research then design prototype? <laughs> so yeah. um, even though somebody else might use a, a different variation of this voice, still it's potato, potato, um, same thing. So I think that that's not necessary. I think what you can have, you don't even need a design process section to be honest everything you've documented is your design process um so um i think what i would have loved to see would have been stuff around your research goal not just the goal of because i can see the goal of this phase of the project was to build an mvp that blah 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 so that's basically the goal of that's what the whole project is about but you say you carried out research, at least from the image of design process research, um, research design and all that. So what's uh, the whole research phase seems missing from this old case study. I don't see anything on research at all. I don't see research goals. I don't see um, number of people you spoke to. In what way did you speak to them? What were you trying to achieve? I don't see anything about research, which is so, so, so important. And um, if I'm looking at your portfolio, and that's apparently the first project that I would have clicked on, and I can only see, I, I just don't see that important part. I might, I might pause a bit. So as a, that's as a hiring manager, um, I think it's the same thing with looking at even the second project I'm looking at too. I see research, a lot of research is missing. Um, so I see you have discovered, again, you switched it. So like I said, potato, potato, you wrote mm -hmm. discovery here. Um, so yeah, I, I, for this one, I can see you say you con okay, started by conducting competitive analysis and gathering user pain points. So what were those user pain points? You've not said it. Um, um, what was the result of the competitive analysis? Why did you even decide to do a competitive analysis in the first place? um stuff around all of that very important so um your user flow i like that you draw user flow that's really good um it's good i generally i think you've, you've done well um i think the major yeah the major feedback two major feedback i have looking at your portfolio is the research thing i mentioned be missing and then the yeah. second thing is layouts. Layouts, I've not explained that. So that's more like I know people use Notion a lot 
for their um, portfolio. But I'm just, I'm just usually, I don't know. I Notion is good. However, there's usually that limitation when it comes to how you can lay out your your um, your projects. There's just so much, usually so much white space. This is just the UI designer in me talking, though. <laughs> um, it's my <laughs> important to this might not be important to a lot of hiring managers, but this is just me. Um, I would have preferred maybe just using maybe and maybe on a website so that you have some more flexibility, depending on a template or maybe. Like me, my portfolio is is just a um, it's just a it's just I use the Canva actually I use Canva to do my template my portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I use Canva free Canva actually. I just used I use Canva. Um, I use one of their presentation templates, and I use that to just document my um, portfolio. That way, I'm able to like lay out stuff. Uh, more landscape, less white space. I'm able to use more images and stuff like that. Anyway, so that's me. But like mm -hmm. I said, this might not be important. The most important thing is documenting your process, which I would probably give you a six over 10 for already based on what I'm looking at, which is not a bad score. Um, looking at your CV, um, your CV is not bad. To be honest, I, I'm not, I can't say that the reason why you're not getting feedback from companies is because you're not passing the ATS. I, to be honest, I don't necessarily be, I don't, I've never really focused on, on creating my CV in such a way that it passes ATS. I've never, I've never played the number games when it comes to applying for jobs. Um, I will talk about that in a bit, but um, looking at your CV right now, I think the only thing I would recommend you improve on is again layouts so i think uh, what might be more important my not necessarily your education is not that important so it being at the top right man it's not might not really serve more maybe your skills might be better being up um work experience very important but i think instead of having your work experience as paragraphs like that you can have it as bullet points um bullet points Okay, so for instance, when you say as a product designer under impact impact now, you said as a product designer, I collaborate with the product owner and engineers to build products and services. That, that is fluff. That should not be there. Get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> what needs to be there is exactly what you are doing in that role. Using certain keywords. Do you carry out research? Um, it's, it's part of your work. Um, communicating ideas to stakeholders such as top management. Is your work um, presentation? Do you do it, the same thing you're saying by saying I collaborate with product money owners and engineers, but using the actual words of um, design and over to um, doing design documentation for and for proper and over to developers. That right there is actually something. So that's the part of you saying you collaborate with engineers to build it. Mm -hmm. We are actually saying what you did. You need to focus more on impact not just responsibilities so it needs to be more um it needs to be more like i said just doc, you can use bullet point maybe three bullet points per each one the top most three things that you do in that or you do or you did in that particular role something like that um and that thing i've noticed is um run card you say your associate product manager so well, product management is, is not too far-fetched from being a product design. If it was something else that I saw, I would have, I would have said, nah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then looking uh, at your, yeah, please go on. Yeah, so over there, the title was Associate Product Designer, but then my role was mainly, sorry, Associate Product Manager, but then my role was mainly um, product design with a little bit of product management. You see, so that's good. Then that means your title, even though they didn't give you the title, that was your title. So you should put it there. You can say product designer slash product manager slash associate product manager. You understand? Um, so you can you can say it that way so that you'll know that in that role, you took up, you took up the role of you sure you don't need to put associate. You can just say product manager and product designer slash product manager, something like that. And then when you are bullet pointing, you can now say um 
you did this role, you can specifically say like what you did as a product manager, specifically what you did as a product designer, um, the impact of your work, like you said, to ship over 10 features, blah, 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 that should be one of the, um, the, the points. So use more of bullet points. That's something I would say. Um, I think that that would, that might be the reason, the ATS you mentioned, that might be the reason it's failing because looking at this whole thing, I don't see much of the keywords that they will be searching with. Things like research, things like collaboration. Okay, you have, I think I saw collaboration, so collaborate somewhere. Okay, so things like research, things like user flows. There are certain words they are, all, they are usually looking for. So right. how you can know these words is go to LinkedIn jobs and just randomly check for the descriptions and see some of the words they use. And you, you know the kind of words to use in your CV. So um, what else? I think other than that, it's it's fine. Um, I think your CV is not too bad. Just lay out, reorganize it. Um, okay, yeah, one more thing I noticed. In your CV, you mentioned already to me that you were a back-end developer before. That's, that's wonderful experience that should somehow make its way to your CV. Uh, for instance, I was a back-end developer as well one time before I became a front-end developer and then I got into product design. So um that's that's important somehow find a way to fit it in um ideally a cv should have like a summary i know you have that in your portfolio at the beginning well i think that's fair enough if that's the url you share with with a recruiter i think no that's i think that's fine i actually already was looking at it from your linkedin i clicked on it from your linkedin okay so um do you have any questions for now before i go on yeah, uh, no, not for now. For now, just like, I think maybe if I have any questions based on it, when I'm implementing what we've discussed, I will reach out to you and maybe see if I can schedule another call. Okay, so yes, that uh, is what I'm about to talk about, actually. So um, what I've been trying to do um, since we started this call is more of diagnosis, like a doctor. <laughs> so <laughs> trying to see... <laughs> Trying to see how your past and your present kind of link, try kind of links um, to your future, whether that future you want is actually attainable in the near future, and also to see if I can actually help you. Um, so that's what I've been trying to figure out. Um, this is actually first of a couple of sessions. Um, the next sessions would be, I have four more sessions, but they'll be starting in January. Probably the first, I'm not sure, first or second week in January. Um, it's going to be more of a transformational kind of coaching, not, not a teach me basics of prayer design kind of thing. You don't need that anyway. I don't think you need that. Yes, we learn every day, but you don't really need that right now. Um, so I also would not be doing certain things for you, but I'll circle back to this. So now some of the things that I would be foc focusing on in the upcoming sessions would be trying to show you the platforms where you should be on um, for you to attract the kind of jobs you want. Um, then also your LinkedIn profile, being able to optimize your LinkedIn profile in a way that attracts the kind of jobs you want. So I usually tell people that say to me, oh, the UX field is saturated. Oh, there's no job out there. I've been applying for so many months. Mm -hmm. When I hear all those yada, 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 I say, okay. So um, I get on an average every week, I get at least two new jobs delivered to my LinkedIn DM from top recruiters. Mm -hmm. um, I think two or three weeks ago, I got, I got, no, actually it's more than two or three weeks ago, almost two months now. I got from Facebook. Um, I got afterwards, some weeks ago, I got from Google, their recruiter. Um, I get from like all these big organizations. I, like I'm based in the UK, so I get a lot of these things. Even when I was in Nigeria, I used to get them. Um, I think the frequency has kind of increased now, but I get them. Amazing location. I, yeah, well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe just because I changed the location thing as on my LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I also think is is not just because of that. Of I don't think it's just because of location. I think it's because of certain things. One is um, um, the way I've optimized my LinkedIn profile. That's one. Secondly, because of my activity. 
So those are the two things that somehow I've, um, I, I believe I've gravitated this kind of opportunities towards me. So I am, um, one, so that's why one of the things I'll be, the second of it that I'll be doing during the session would be helping, assisting in re, in optimizing your LinkedIn profile, basically. Then the other thing would be to help assist clean up your CV. Um, to be honest, you're one of the very, very, maybe one of two people since I started doing these free sessions that actually, actually reviewed their CV. <laughs> oh, yeah, for <laughs> I mostly mm -hmm. don't do it because it is could be a time consuming thing and I'm watching my time. So um, I help I'll assist in cleaning up um, more of what I've started doing already, even helping you review. Like you said, you do some of the things I've said already, but you probably need it reviewed again. Then same thing with your portfolio. Then um, cover letter, which you say you do not have, is a big deal. It's probably why you're not getting mm -hmm. responses. So. Mm -hmm. Cover letter is, um, even though the job you're applying for does not have the field for cover letter, you will find a way to deliver your cover letter to the recruiter. <laughs> <laughs> that is how it's done. So there, there is always a way to deliver your cover letter because if you just drop in your application like that, it's more like you are lost in the middle of hundreds, even thousands of other people that are applying. You usually need an edge yeah. over those people. And how I have found it is more like delivering a DHL letter to the recruiter. Like, read me, see me, I'm <laughs> better than them. So, <laughs> or even if I'm not better, like I, I am more proactive and proactive is usually what many of these people are looking for. I remember one job that I, I, I um, applied for, what I did, so I think there was no space for cover letter as well, but somehow I found out those are some things I'll teach you guys. Um, by the way, it's going to be a group of coaching, very small group. But okay. um, one of the things that, that I'll be teaching is how you can dig out these people's contact information and deliver your uh, message directly to them. So one time when I applied for one job, that was one of the jobs I was applying for then. I didn't get the job anyway. But um, I didn't get a job because I was in Nigeria then. <laughs> <laughs> and said he wanted somebody in the UK. But what happened then was that the recruiter, they, ha they had not even seen my submission, my, my formal submission for the, for the job, my actual application on their, I think maybe Indeed or somewhere. They had not seen it yet, but the one I delivered directly to him was what he saw, and I was already scheduled for interviews before they um, realized, oh, sorry. Even though we really love your submission and your process and everything, I'm so sorry. When you arrive at the UK, if you ever be in the UK, remember <laughs> what <I> call. <laughs> yeah. back. So sometimes it happens that they don't even see, they don't even remember to check my location because of the way I've submitted my application. It's afterwards, I'm like, oh no, we should have seen that from the very beginning because I just skipped yeah. the whole ATS, whatever. Like, Nobody goes through my, like, no computer goes through my CV many times. Mm -hmm. So I've not even had, to, I, I've never run my CV through um, any of those um, auto, um, all those platforms to check whether it performs. I've never done it. I don't, I don't even think I know those places. But yeah, so um, that's something else I'll be helping with, um, which is cover letter to help you craft your cover letter based on your interest and your experience. Your experience uh, in the past as a backend developer is huge and should not be discounted. Like it's something that should be forefront. What that tells most hiring managers is the fact that you already will not give them problem. You won't be designing stuff that are flying because you understand the limitations and the pain points of developers. So the fact that you already mm -hmm. have that experience. So that's something that should somehow make its way to your cover letter, like the first paragraph. So cover letter is not, the cover letters I'll be assisting with is not the type that um it's not it's not just some generic template of hi I am I'm Michael I have this <laughs> set of experience and they have seen that already in your CV they know there's certain things that needs to make its way there so um the other thing would be depending on how proactive you are like you already applying for some jobs I'll probably be helping with um mock interviews um. Yeah, again, depends on how fast you are. I won't be chasing people to apply for jobs. <laughs> if it's paying you very well, you would be applying for jobs. Mm -hmm. You'd be sending me the links to be like, yeah. oh, I'm applying for this job. How do I make my application better? Stuff like that. And um, 
Okay, lastly, it would be specializations in UX design. And that one is, um, I usually say that regardless of how much of a generalist you want to be within UX design, it's always good to have something like a niche that you're really, really, really good at or that you enjoy the most because um, somehow it will shine, it will, it will show forth during the interview process. In short, you might even be asked, which part of UX design do you love the most? That's a common question. So if you are not passionate about a part of UX design, like you can, yeah, you can passionate about the whole thing, but there has to be, so, there's something that usually shines forth amongst everything. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. so um, those are the things that the session will be about. It's not going to be a free session. <laughs> It's mm. going to be a group session, like I said earlier, but very small group, between five to ten people. So okay. once the first, once the number, once I reach that number of the people, I would I would just shut it down. Um, it's going to cost hundred pounds. I don't know how much that is in Ghana cities, but in Naira, I know it's I don't know Naira is messed up. But, um, uh, I think that's like one twenty dollars thereabout. I think okay. I don't know. But basically 100 pounds and um so what i would do next is i'll send you an email with the summary of um what we've discussed like some of the things i've noted about you and what your next steps would be including deadline for um, payments and okay so the only thing i would not be sending yet would be when exactly the session is starting that would be very much clearer yeah. to me in the next maybe two weeks or so um, there is a deadline for payment, which would be somewhere around Christmas, because there are certain things I would require of you and others to, to get done first before you join the session. Things like yeah. shape, like putting your portfolio into shape according to some of the things we've discussed, realigning maybe your CV according to at least the very least of things we've discussed during the session. I'm expecting to see these things first. Um, yeah. If you don't have these things, you would not be able to maximize our session. Um, what I would like to focus on would be things like your public profile, things like, okay, helping you find some something's cover letter, um, more preparing you towards interviews and stuff like that. I don't want to be helping you to create case studies. So um, yeah. if you look through your own portfolio by yourself, review it, always look at it from the eyes of the other person. When you create your portfolio, create it like as if it's a product, as if it is actually a digital product that you are creating. The reason is because um, in the end, you are actually, it's a product, really. It is a product and the other person mm -hmm. is the user. So that's how you should always look at it that way. So if you look at, if only you look at it that way, you'd be able to know where you're lacking. You'd be able to say, okay, maybe the text size is too small here. Yeah. Okay, if I was a recruiter, what do I want to see first? Okay, if um, I was a hiring manager, what's important to me? Would I actually choose this CV? Or would I choose this cover letter over others? Stuff like that. So look at it from, always look at it from that, from that angle because it's actually a product. So um, that is all for now. We are exactly out of time. I actually give 30 minutes, not 25 minutes, but you have any questions, I can take it. So um, the, once again, the session, I wanted to know if it's going to be like a monthly, um, a monthly session and then the payments as well you said it was going to be a hundred pounds but you didn't specify if it was going to be monthly or oh um, oh okay so no for for the whole sessions um for the whole four sessions it's going to be um hundred pounds i am not sure whether i'm going to be doing this monthly because it's very 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 time consuming and i currently have mm -hmm. two full-time roles <laughs> <laughs> I can only do two yeah. full -time jobs and a old, I have an old one-year-old human being. So I'm not sure I can I can do it monthly, but then maybe once per quarter. So maybe after the January session, maybe the next will be sometime April, maybe once per quarter. I don't know. But um it might be more frequent. I don't know yet. Yeah. But um the payment will be for the whole sessions. I actually see people charge a whole lot more for coaching sessions. I see within 2,000 pounds, 3,000. I see these things and I'm like, for the life of me, I do not have the mind to charge people <laughs> money. That's a lot of hard earned money. <laughs> and I, um, I'm, more, I'm more interested in helping people really. So, but I have to charge people for it because if it doesn't pinch yeah. the phone, you might, you, at least yeah. sometimes you, you say, I'm too tired, I'm sleeping because you did not pay for it. Yeah. 
or exactly. your cockroach died or <laughs> your cat slumped, something like that. <laughs> yeah, because right. if it's if it's free, people just keep coming up with excuses. Oh yes, as to why they didn't do it. Even me, even them. yeah. As much as I actually um, appreciate people's efforts and all of that, but I know that if if I was getting something like this for free, I mean there'll be some mornings maybe we're having sessions on Saturdays I'll just say no I'm tired I have to sleep extra five minutes I'll meet them there extra 10 minutes you know <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah um so should I look forward to seeing you in January yeah definitely. okay okay awesome um I'll send you the mail you should actually receive it today I'll make sure I send it today yeah. I'm having another session the next few minutes okay um all right Good to chat with you, Michael. Um, nice chatting with you. Too. Feel free to send me an email. I try to respond to emails within 40 hours, a few days, <laughs> but <I'll, laughs> I try to, and I would try to respond. All right, see you. All right, All right. see you. Yeah. Bye.